right, guys, welcome to part two of my Dean XL7 multi-scale review. This is the rework part of the review. Um, I've got the nut locks off of here so you can see kind of what was going on a little bit better. Uh, you can see the rounded out Phillips screw from the factory chewed up. Again, $2,600 guitar. But you can see my problem here um, as far as what's going on with this nut. So this is at an angle up to this point, and then it falls, it falls over right here, and it goes, it drops down. So the string is breaking right here, and that's where the, you're tuning it to, when it should be at this point right here. So this is what's causing all of my tuning to be off down the neck, is when I tune it, it's tuning to this spot and not this spot. So I am going to try and install a different nut. Um, again, this is like a Floyd Bros nut. I'll put that guy on there and see how that goes. And then we get to fret leveling. All right, so the stock nut is off. <clears throat> and you can see underneath here, here is the, I'll say the fretboard. Here is some shim work that they did, some shoddy shim work. Underneath here, and this is also like a chipped piece of wood where the screws went in. Um, I am going to put this guy on here. He's pretty close to a match. I'm going to mill it down uh, to get the same height as the stock one. And then also, we can see here, I have a little bit of alignment issue with the two screw holes. Uh, they are the right distance, but they're off center. So you can see how this is kicked over this way where it should be up here. So I'm going to have to get on the mill and mill over those holes so that I can properly align this guy on there. But I think I'll be set after that. In conjunction with that, um, I have obviously the strings off of here and went through looking at leveling stuff. I do have some issues. Um, Again, forgot where it's at. One of these guys right here. Hear that? That should be flat. It's rocking on that sixth fret. And then there's some places down here too um, where I have some rocking going on. Um, so I'm going to have to just re-level the fretboard. Um, I have block that I used to do that with. So I'm going to re-level it and then my shaping tool I'll use afterwards to get a nice round edge on these. Again, thankful uh, for Dean for cheaping out and giving me nickel frets because they're much easier to work with. Although I feel like at this point I'm so far into this project I might as well just pull out the frets and put stainless in there. But I will just level these out and swap frets at a later point in time. So. So what I got ahead of me. All right, so now I've gone through and I've gotten all the frets leveled out um, as far as the high points. And I'm gonna go through here and use um, these awesome uh, little sanding erasers and go over smooth and polish these frets out so they're butter, butter, butter smooth. All right, guys, so after a bit of elbow grease, I have this fretboard leveled out and nice and polished and then I um, obviously have oiled the board I'm letting that soak in now but next will be to tackle this guy which hopefully doesn't go too too bad all right so uh, new day and um, the neck is all dried and nice and polished and smooth. I took down this surface and sanded it and removed their shim that they had on the high E side uh, just to make it level. And then, so that's all prepped. Uh, next, I'm going to get this guy on here and I'm going to have to mill down this surface. Uh, typically, I like my string height coming off a nut uh, about 0.2 to 0.25 millimeters so I need, this needs to get this needs to drop down a little bit um, to adapt to that but we'll get it we'll get it done 
And then I uh, also need to move the mounting holes over to center it up on the neck, but it uh, shouldn't be a problem. All right, so I'm um, in the machine shop now, and what I'm gonna do is I gotta pull this hole over uh, about a millimeter, and then this other hole needs to go over 1.5 millimeters. And then we are going to also bore the countersink in. It should be done. All right, so I slotted them. Uh, I've got it centered up on the neck. Uh, the nut is still a little bit high though. Um, so I'm going to need to take down the back side of that nut a little bit more because I'm like 0.8 millimeters on the high E and about 0.35 on the E, low E. So I'm gonna go and mill it again on the back. All right guys, so I have it all fitted up now. Um, I milled down the back side of that, so I'm at 0.25 millimeters on both of these guys. Uh, by the way, um, it's always worth investing in some good guitar tools. Uh, this is a nice set of gauge sticks and it helps you slide underneath here and measure your height. Uh, but I am set to go, so what I'm gonna do is take this nut back off and touch it up, sand it, and paint it, and be good to go. All right, guys, so it's all done now. And um, you can see I got the nut installed, and uh, it came out really, really nice. Super happy with it. The other side, and um, she's straight as narrow. She plays nice and clean now. And it was I was able to uh, get it all tuned up and it's actually true now for the notes. Uh, again, if you didn't see the first video, the reason why I went on to all this is because it would be off, it would be sharp going up the frets and then also the non-leveled frets. But I got all that done now and um, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. I got the setup going on on it. Um, she's nice and smooth. And uh, she plays and sounds amazing. It's just a shame that I had to do all this work myself on an expensive guitar. It's pretty, pretty crazy. And just real quick, I'll show you guys um, the difference in switching out the nut made. Um, we'll go with, start with the Unruly G. Let's see how it, it's in tune now for every note. which is not what it was doing before, um, but I'm glad that I got it all fixed up now. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, it is done and gone through uh, and tuned up um, and action and intonation and neck relief, everything is perfect. And I'm really happy with it. Again, uh, you may ask why I spent this time to fix their atrocious factory build. Uh, and that's because it's really the only guitar that's like this um, and checks all the boxes as far as what I want in a guitar. And I really, really am happy with it other than their build quality, uh, which is just really bad. I mean, you saw everything I had to go through. Um, that being said, I'm happy with the guitar now. It was worth the effort that I put into it, which was about half a day uh, going through it and leveling out the frets and fixing the nut and doing everything else as far as pickups and everything else. I mean, it, it was bad. But am I happy with it? Yes, now I am happy with it. And uh, again, it sounds great. Um, it plays great. I really do like the way they did the multi-scale. I do think that they handled it better than other companies, in my personal opinion, in my personal playing preferences. 
Again, I'd rather start at zero um, at the nut and then work my way forward. It's not natural for me to have my wrist going out that far when it fans out away from me. So I really like this a whole, whole lot. One thing I will note though is I wish their fret markers, um, they have them on the high side or the low B side um, up here and then they continue that after the 12th fret. But um, once you start to get this major angle here on the higher frets, it really makes more sense if they had dropped the markers down here instead of putting them up here uh, because it, th it does throw you off if you're you know, looking from above and you're actually you know, on a different fret. Uh, I would have liked to see them to move these fret markers down uh, to me, it makes more sense uh, because you're, um, you know, when you're playing, most of your fretting is going to be down here. It's not going to be on the top part, but that's just me. Other than that, I love the guitar. Um, I'm not even getting into Dean as a company. Uh, they seem to be having a hard time right now. But uh, besides that, um, I think the guitar is great. It's just their build quality that they should be woefully ashamed for and uh, it's just really terrible and again i would love for somebody to point out to me where fourteen hundred dollars is and a difference between their standard um, model with the floyd versus the multi-scale um, with the the seymour's because uh, otherwise it's the same guitar it's the same materials um, the only thing is is this is fanned out and it has the Kaler, uh, but that's not $1,400. Uh, again, this is a Korean made guitar. It's not US or Japan. So it's way, way overpriced. And again, you can get a $300 guitar that you don't have to level frets and adjust the nut on. So they should be ashamed as far as that goes. And uh, I hope that anybody that looks at getting this guitar sees this video and um, it helps them make a purchase decision. Until next time, I will see you guys later.